here is the BYP Traveler and today we have our guest, Miss Catherine Levy. Hello. Our music teacher here at Bogart International School in Brussels. And today we're going to have an amazing demonstration of how we can integrate music in the primary years program. So we are all so triggered actually to see what you're <laughs> going to show us today. Thank you for having me. Well, we're going to talk about how to integrate singing uh, into the PYP uh, program. So mm -hmm. I'm really excited to share that with you today. Oh my God, so triggered. Let's go. Hi everyone, my name is Catherine and I am the PYP music teacher here at BIS. And I'm really happy to be with you today to share with you um, how you can integrate music or the art generally into the PYP program. So a little bit about myself first. As you can probably tell from my accent, hopefully, I'm from Sydney, Australia. Uh, it's where I'm born and raised and I started my career teaching there. Uh, I've taught in the UK and I've been living here now in Belgium for nine years. Um, and I've taught at a, at a whole bunch of different schools, IB schools, um, UK schools, Australian schools. So I, I have um, a broad range of teaching um, experience in different, in, in different countries. And so today we're going to talk about how to integrate music into the PYP program. And uh, I promise you it's not as difficult as it seems. It can be really overwhelming as a music teacher when you're starting out, especially if you don't have much experience in the IB, to really figure out what are these concepts, what are these units, how on earth do I teach my lessons um, in an IB way. Um, that's what I'm gonna show you how to do today. So I'm gonna show you firstly two really important things. The first thing, is the units of inquiry. So we're gonna start with these units and I really recommend you watch the um, second video of POP Traveler because um, he goes into lots of detail about the units and it's done really well. So we have the six um, units. So it's how we organize ourselves, who we are, how we express ourselves, how the world works, where we are in time and place and sharing the planet. Okay, they are the six our transdisciplinary um, kind of themes or units that we have. So this is the really important thing that you have to get your head around first, okay? These units. And why? Because um, as it says in the scope and sequence, which I'll talk about in a second, being a PYP music teacher is not just music on the side as a specialist, we are PYP teachers. So it's really important that we um, internalize and teach to these units as much as we can, okay? Uh, so we have a couple of options with, with how we do our unit planning. You could only teach according to these six units, which is what I do personally, or if you really wanna challenge yourself, you can create your own independent units. And I have lots of music teaching colleagues that do this. They will often do it linked to a concert or performance or something like that. I've seen ones, for example, my friend teaches one called It's Christmas Time, which is all about Christmas and traditions around Christmas and therefore music and singing different songs around Christmas. Uh, that would be, for example, a unit maybe here, like here, and you have It's Christmas Time if you want to do something like that. Um, I personally don't do that because I find that the units themselves offer so many opportunities for um, inquiry that I don't really need to create my own unit. So I personally don't do it that way. Okay, so that, that's the units of inquiry. You might often see it written like this, so units of inquiry, okay? Then the second most important thing that you need as a PYP music teacher is the arts scope and sequence. If there's any document that you like memorize, it's this one. Okay, it's super, super, super important. So in the document, you have these wonderful tables um, and it explains how in the arts, we have um, four phases, phase one, two, three, and four. And there's all kinds of different things on here about composing or playing instruments or whatever. I'm gonna to focus today on singing, okay? Uh, and we're gonna look at what the scope and sequence says about singing. The reason I'm doing that, it's, it's for a few reasons. The first reason is because in the art scope and sequence itself, it says, uh, the first thing about music, musical experiences and learning begin with the voice. So actually the voice is the foundation of our music teaching. 
And so that's why it's so important that singing happens every lesson if possible. Um, and it happens all the way through um, the whole program, all the way from early years until the end of PYP and indeed in NYP and DP as well. Um, so we're going to focus on singing for that reason. And secondly, singing is the thing that requires the least amount of resources. So uh, with that, uh, one of the reasons why singing is so good uh, is because if you're at a school that perhaps isn't as well um, resourced, perhaps you're uh, in a country where it's difficult to bring in instruments or use um, devices in the classroom, or for example, if you're at a school that's just starting or another campus is starting, you might not have any resources. It might literally be you have a piano or a guitar and a few percussion instruments, which is not so uncommon actually. And so you can still do so much with the voice. You can run whole music programs just with the voice. So that's why I'm gonna focus on the voice today. So let's firstly have a look at what the scope and sequence says about singing. So in phase one, so at the beginning phase, we use our voice to imitate sounds and learn songs, okay? That's what we do in phase one. In phase two, it says about singing, we sing, so we're getting onto singing now, individually and in unison. So individually on your own, and then in unison, the same melody as a whole group or as a whole class. In phase three, we have two different parts of the singing uh, that, where it talks about singing. Firstly, it focuses on we sing with accuracy and control, focused on the musical elements. This involves things like dynamics, so loud and soft, crescendo, decrescendo, things like that, and things like tempo. Um, temp I'll say tempo slash rhythm. So the tempo of the song, maybe it changes, maybe it stays the same, and rhythms, really getting more complex rhythms. And secondly, they have to be able to sing partner songs. Uh, we define partner songs where there's at least two parts that are different sung at the same time that sound good together. It's different from harmony, which happens in phase four. Um, it's where you can have a round, for example, or you would have, um, I'm gonna show you with the song in the jungle, which everyone loves. This is a classic partner song, okay? And then finally in phase four, in our, in our final phase, and this is the most difficult thing, uh, individually and in harmony. Okay, I'm gonna show you how we do that. This is the most difficult thing to do if you've ever run uh, a choir program or anything like that, is teaching students to sing in harmony. So that's what our phases um, encompass, and this is straight from the scope and sequence, word for word from the scope and sequence. So what I'm going to do now is give you some examples of songs that I do with the students um, that uh, help us to reach the aims that we have in, in each of these phases, okay? So phase one, uh, I'm going to show you a song called Fine Musician. I won't show you the whole song because it's, it's a fun one though, I promise. Um, and this is from a group, I put some resources up here called The Wiggles, who are an Australian group uh, who do all kinds of amazing songs. And for phase one, I really recommend them. I'm going to sit down to show you this song because I'm also going to show you how I do it with the students. Um, one other aspect of singing as well is um, having body movements with the singing. And this really helps with the students' rhythm as well. So whenever I can, I don't just have them sit and sing or stand and sing. I always try and have some kind of movement or clicking or clapping or something going with it, especially in phase one and two. So I'll just show you the first part of this song. I have them sit on either on the floor with legs crossed or they can do it in their seats as well. And we're going to be doing this action during the song. And I'll show you how we imitate the different instruments. And the fun musician I practice every day. People come from miles around just to hear me. What does we play? And it starts with the drum. So we go drum, 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 tum, tum, rat a tat tat, drum, tum, tum, drum, 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 tum, tum, rat a tat, tum, tum, tum. And then we have boom, 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 boom. And they imitate their drum playing, etc. Okay? And it goes on. And there's lots of instruments. So I won't do the whole song for you. But the reason this song is perfect is because they are imitating sounds and they're learning a song. So they have to imitate the sounds of the different instruments. We have drums, we have banjo, we have piano, we have cowbell bagpipes, which they love, and of course, didgeridoo. That instrument's really interesting. And so that, when they try and make that sound, it's like wah, 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 wah kind of sound, which they really love. So this song's perfect, it's very high energy. 
um, and it's a really great example of a song that you could do in phase one, okay? But then the question comes in, okay, that's, that's a great phase one song, but how on earth do you incorporate it with these units of inquiry? Where would it go? Well, there's a couple of ways you can do this. Um, the first thing is you could do it like thematically. So in this case, for example, we're talking about different instruments and how different instruments work. This might work really well, for example, in a unit like how the world works, how instruments made, um, how do we use them, etc. Or you could talk about in this song, this is how we um, express ourselves uh, using different instruments. And so it might fit really nicely into this unit here, for example, how we express ourselves. And another thing I would really encourage you to do to link it to a unit, at the back of the art scope and sequence, they have this fantastic little guide about questioning. And as we know in the IB, in the POP, well, the whole IB, uh, it's really important. Questions are super important. And we have lots of different ideas for um, uh, different questions we can ask. And this song is a perfect song to start asking those questions. For example, what sounds do you hear in this music? Or for example, what sounds can you make with this instrument? What other sounds can you make with the drums? We can make a boom, a ch, or whatever. They can imitate different sounds. Um, another really nice one, um, I think it's under function, but anyway, it's uh, what material would this instrument be made of? Would it be with, a, with strings? Would it be something that you hit? Would it be made of plastic? Would it be made of metal? There's all kinds of questioning that you can draw from a song like this, a very simple song that you can draw from. So um, the way I normally do it is I, I find the song and then I find a way to incorporate it into the units that we're doing. It's a little tricky with phase one, it gets easier as we move along. So I'm gonna show you uh, two very quick examples for phase two. Okay, so I'm gonna show you Power in Me um, and the song starts like this. And we would normally have individual students singing parts of the verse. You could have it like one line at a time, you could choose one student to sing the verse, depends on the size of your class, okay? And I typically would just have them standing nice and straight, shoulders back, arms down to sing the verse. So it goes, when the race is nearly done, and I feel like I can't go on, I know I can do something about it. You can add actions if you want. My heart will start to race. And the way I did it for the concert actually was nice. We had each class sing one verse and then we were all in unison together as a whole PYP um, for the choruses. And then I had this really nice like um, a call and response bridge section which works super well. So songs like that are really precious. They're really, really great. Um, you could even argue that the bridge could make this into a partner song and push it into phase three, but I, I really believe this is like a really strong phase two song. Um, and just like before, we've learned the song, we've taught it to the students, how do we integrate it into our units? Well, let's think about ways we could approach this song. So we're singing about the power in me, it's inspirational. Um, I personally put this song into the unit Who We Are, um, because uh, when I did this, I think it was with PYP2, if I remember correctly, um, they were looking at themselves, um, motivation, what basically gets them out of bed in the morning, all those kind of um, ideas, and the song just linked so perfectly to that. So that was the first time uh, that I did that song. It, it just fits so perfectly into that unit. Another possibility, um, I've actually seen this song done in Sharing the Planet, actually, because um, 
You could also argue that it's a song that we have the power to change. We have the power to change the world. It's almost like it gets, it verges onto like almost like a protest type song. So that kind of song could work for sharing the planet as well. So think about ways that the theme of the song could integrate into these units. And again, it depends what the teacher's doing in that year and how you can um, uh, integrate it into the unit. Okay, moving on. You're probably gonna laugh at this one, but actually, the students love this song, okay? Um, this is going to show you how we can uh, really cover phase three. So we're singing with accuracy and control. We're going to look at pitch especially, but remember our musical elements, dynamic, tempo, rhythm. I'll show you why that's complex in this song. And this is the classic partner song. And if you've seen the movie The Lion King, as I, I, I imagine most people have, um, this is In the Jungle, but it's not actually from The Lion King, just so you know, it was already a song before The Lion King, but everyone knows it from The Lion King. Um, I almost wrote Disney on the resources because actually Disney is a great resource and it's taken over our lives, but I decided not to, okay? So, in the jungle, uh, this is, I'll show you why this is a partner song. You have part one, which is the wimba way, wimba way, wimba way part, okay? So you normally divide the students and one part is a wimba way, a wimba way, a wimba way, a wimba way, a wimba way. of the song which is actually quite challenging it also challenges their breathing because if you think about it if I take a big breath and then we have to take a really quick breath there before we go on to the next verse so that's a really good opportunity to teach staggered breathing um, which is where the students all breathe at different times so that you don't get that big effect of all the students going <gasps> at the same time, which can, not, can sound a little bit not so great. Um, so that's part one, and then of course part two is Because to go uh, we to hit that interval uh, is quite a challenge. And so you can actually do vocal warm-up exercises like I do with my students, practicing uh, like a scale or like uh, arpeggio or even a slide, which they love. Uh, going from uh, uh, and then you can also go uh, 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 to practice that interval. Okay, so that's an example of how you can do accuracy and control within that song. And then it's a perfect partner song because you have part one going a wind away, a wind away, a wind away, and the other part going in the jungle. And it's also a challenge rhythmically. It doesn't seem like it, but if you were to click your fingers, the melody is very syncopated. So it's like in the jungle, the mighty jungle, the lion sleeps tonight. Do you notice that the main notes are on the offbeat, so it's very syncopated. Um, so that's actually challenging for a lot of students. A lot of them know it from the Disney film, but even if they know it well, they can struggle to sing it. And then we have the wimbo way, a wimbo way, a wimbo way. To keep that consistently going is also a challenge for the students. They'll often slow down or speed up. So even though it seems like an easy song, it's actually not an easy song to sing well as a partner song with the class. Okay, so that's In the Jungle. Let's again think about how can we integrate this into our units of inquiry. Again, lots of options. Most obvious one that's jumping out at you is maybe sharing the planet. Um, that one might um, uh, stand out. How the world works, it could also fit into there. Um, I've even seen it used for this first one, how we organize ourselves, because one really good thing about teaching uh, singing is that you teach organization and parts and um, kind of harmony and things like that. And that's all about how we organize ourselves, how we organize our voices. I saw this wonderful unit that someone did about choirs and choral singing and about how choirs are organized in the different parts. 
Um, and so you could actually even incorporate it into the first unit there. So that's one way that you could bring a song like In the Jungle into your units. Um, finally, phase four, and this is the challenge, okay? Teaching harmony. Teaching harmony and how to do it is a whole nother video, so I'm not gonna go into that right now, okay? But I'm just gonna show you this song, Inane, which is one of my favorite songs. I'm gonna put my capo down. If you're a guitar player, I do this on the fifth, I do this on the fifth fret, so it's in the key of C. Um, this song is called Inane. It is an Australian Aboriginal song, and it's actually from like the Torres Strait Island, um, Island I think. Uh, it's the Yori Yori language, so it's not in English. That's very important to know. Um, so this song has everything. It has individual, unison, partner song, and harmony all in one. Uh, and it's I save this one for PRP5 every year because it, I honestly think it's challenging to introduce before PRP5, in this case, uh, phase four. So the melody goes like this. It goes... In a kapuana, in a kapuana, hey, ula, 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 hey, hippie, hippie. Okay, that's the main melody, okay? So you can do that in unison, that's no problem. And this is where it starts to get exciting. We have this section called where they say go and a go and a go and a go and a go and And literally in the language, they're chasing a goana, which is a large lizard. Um, and so that's what the, what it means. So it goes like this. It goes go and go and go and go and go and then go and go and go and go and go go and go and go and go and go and go. So you have those um, go and a parts, okay? And then it goes back to in a ne kapuana. So they're the basic parts of the song. And then what the song does, it starts to do um, partner partner song, okay? So in the Go and a go and a go and a go and a go. One group will be like, go and a go and a go. Group two, go and a 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 go. Like this, okay? And then group three has their own part going, go a go and a go and a go a go and a go and a go a go and a go and a go a. And then when you combine all those three parts together, if they get it, it sounds beautiful really really nice but it's a challenge okay so that's the partner song aspect of it but remember to push into phase four we have to also have harmony okay it's not enough just to have partner song we have to have harmony which brings us to the end of the song and this is the part they always struggle with so we have our inane kapuana melody and then we have a higher soprano part which is inane kapuana inane top of the regular in a melody okay so as you can imagine there's a lot going on in this song you've got the unison part you've got the partner song part and then at the end you have the harmony so this one is a really wonderful example of phase four because you're, you've got everything that you need to be hitting phase four and there's another reason why this song is so good not just because it's a great example of what they should be doing at phase four but it's a really great example of a non-Western music tradition piece. And as it says in the art scope and sequence, um, we really want to be moving away from only teaching Western art music. As much as I love Western art music, I'm a huge Mozart, Beethoven, Bach fan, of course, but there are so many other music traditions we need to be um, showing our students. And so this is a great example of introducing a song where the language isn't too difficult for the students to master so that they can sing something that, that's in a language that's not English. And it also fits really nicely into uh, some of our units here. I always do this one in um, how we express ourselves because in this unit, typically in PYP5, um, we're doing like different cultures or something like that. And this is a great example of cultural ritual music. Um, this would also lead really well, for example, into students bringing songs, folk songs from their home. Um, and uh, showing the class. And I generally do that every year. And you'd be surprised how many folk songs the students know from their own cultures. So this is like a little um, introduction into the idea of cultural folk songs. Okay, so now we're going to talk about assessment. How do we assess students in the PYP program for music? 
So as you know, we assess them in two ways, formative and summative. Um, the formative is uh, basically seeing how they're going during the unit. Uh, the best way that someone um, explained this to me once is imagine you're making um, a pot of soup and, and you're putting different things in and you're mixing it and someone's hovering over you saying, add a little bit more garlic, add a little bit more flour, add a little bit more salt. That's formative assessment. That's formative feedback. In the process of doing it, we give feedback and we assess. Then you have summative assessment. This is at the end of the unit. And imagine the soup again. This is when you sit down and you eat the bowl of soup and you give it a grade. You say it's really good, or oh, it needs a bit more salt, or oh, you didn't add enough flour. So they're the different, the two different types of ways that we assess students. Um, if you'd like to know more about that, I really recommend the video on um, uh, assessment by POP Traveler. Um, okay, so how on earth do I do this in music? I won't lie, it can be tricky. I personally, just as a, as a teacher, always find formative assessment easier than summative. That's just my wiring. Um, so formative comes naturally to me, to be honest with you. It happens in every lesson. The way that I do this is after we warm up our voices and we sing, I take a good two to three minutes to give feedback. So important. Feedback is the best way we can use our voice as teachers. So I will maybe talk to students one-on-one -on -one or as a class and say, that was really good, we need to work on that harmony, how can we make that rhythm better? But even a better way to do it is asking the students themselves, what can we improve? This is, I ask this every lesson, they're sick of me asking, what can we improve? How can we make it better? And they always know, they'll always say, oh, I think that we're a little bit flat or you know we're not hitting the note properly or we're a little bit out of time and we're not staying uh, in time together. And then you say, great, that's exactly right. How can we improve? Well, and then they'll say, why don't we add, add a drum to help us stay in time? Or why don't we do some movement with our hands or click our fingers to help us stay in time, etc." So the best feedback, it comes from the students themselves um, and it needs to happen every single lesson and it should just be a natural part of your lesson, a natural part of your lesson flow, okay? So that's formative um, assessment. Let's talk about summative. I find this quite challenging in the PYP um, because for me, I have to do some kind of summative assessment for music at the end of every unit. It's really important. If you imagine I've got six units, I teach PYP one to five. I'm so terrible at math. But you can time those two things together and you can tell me how many summative assessments that should make up. It's a lot of them. So what I try and do as much as possible is integrate my assessment with what the teacher is doing. Let me give an example of one that I did that recently with. Um, it was phase two and they were doing protest music. Uh, I think if I remember, it was how we express ourselves. Um, and so what they had to do, they had to perform the song, Ain't Gonna Let Nobody. And as well as that, they composed a protest song. And so their assessment was in the playground, they performed the, pro they, they stopped like the play of all the students. They performed their protest song. And then we went into our school hall and we performed Ain't Gonna Let Nobody. And that was, a, and I assessed them alongside their actual um, uh, homeroom teacher. And that was perfect because not only could I assess them musically, on were they in time, you know, was it a good composition, did they have good rhyme, did it have good rhythm, etc, etc. But we could actually see, did they understand the concepts of the unit that they, that they just studied? Did they understand what protest is? Why we protest? Why throughout history people have done protest? Why we often have music in protest? And so that was an example of a summative assessment done well. Um, another way that I assess is in performances, and I try and get the, the students to perform as often as possible. We have a Christmas concert and an end of year concert, which automatically lends itself to me assessing uh, at the concert twice a year, which is always really helpful. Um, but then throughout the year as well, I try and get them to like perform for maybe one other class or to the younger students or something like that. Um, and then I can um, uh, assess them there. Uh, finally, uh, not so much in singing, but if they're writing music or if they're doing a like, response, um, I would typically do that where they would um, submit some MP3 files to me that they've made. Uh, and then this is where you do 
peer feedback. So then we listen to what everyone's done and then everyone um, uh, talks about what was good about it, what could be improved. Um, that's a really crucial part of it as well. Um, MYP does that a lot, so I find that natural to bring into um, PYP when I assess as well. Finally, I just wanted to talk about um, something briefly. In the art scope and sequence, in my one that's on page six, we have this fantastic table, which I really recommend everyone reads. Um, it's basically in the arts, what we want to emphasize and what we want to de-emphasize. And there are things in here that are so wonderful. So for example, we want to decrease emphasis on individual planning in isolation from other teachers. And we want to emphasize collaborative planning and dialogue with classroom teachers and other single subject teachers. So it's a really nice way to see what are we aiming towards? What do we want to emphasize? And one of the things that it says here is we want to decrease emphasis on a textbook driven arts curriculum. So I'm not a textbook fan, which so that makes it easy for me, but we want to be getting away from that. And instead it says a variety of modalities, activities, assessments, and artistic experiences. So I've listed some examples of resources here, but I also want to emphasize where it says artistic experiences. This is where you get your students to perform or be members of an audience as often as possible in the city that you live in, or if you can get music groups to come in and do workshops with your students, that is a super important part of your music program. And it's something that I do at the start of the year. I have a look at everything that's going on here and I basically schedule in field trips or performances or whatever um, so that I know what we're doing um, that for our year. So that's a really important part of the music program that I wanted to emphasize. I would really like to express how honored I am to be working with such a talented, amazing you. music teacher. Thank you. Uh, you're an inspiration to all music teachers and not only out there. I hope that uh, I gave you a glimpse of what you were asking for. And uh, I am very sure that if you want to communicate with Miss Catherine, mm -hmm. I'm going to be sharing her email address and her LinkedIn account yeah. uh, down below in the section. And uh, feel free to ask questions. Yeah, of course. All right, about your uh, lessons and your music class that yeah. you'll be doing in the PYB. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and uh, see you in the next PYB Traveler video. Let's see who will be with us.